Pluto might not be a planet, but it sure as heck's got moons. And darn it if those moons don't need names. And if you want to help name them, stick with us. Hey kids, this is D News and I'm Trace. Back in 2006, Pluto got demoted from a planet to a dwarf planet. And all of you 20-somethings out there that don't want to live in an eight-planet solar system, this is your time to shine. Pluto had three known moons. That's right, had. Now it's got five moons. The Hubble Space Telescope was flying around out there, taking photos of Pluto, and then suddenly, they spotted two new moons. <laughs> Discovery can happen any time, let me tell you. The new little guys are orbiting outside of Pluto's current moons. Charon, the farrier of souls to the underworld. Hydra, a nine-headed serpent that battled Hercules. And Nyx, the goddess of night. Aside from the name Earth, which has Germanic and English origins, all of the planets that can be seen without a telescope are named for Roman gods. Venus, the goddess of beauty for the brightest planet in the sky. Mars, the god of war for the red planet. And the biggest planet is Jupiter, king of the gods. But it wasn't always so simple. See, there were more multiple cultures that could look up and see celestial bodies in the heavens, and they all gave them their own names. The Egyptians knew Mars as Der Hesher, or the Red One, and the Chinese call it Huosheng, which means Fire Star. Then, when we started discovering the newer, outermost planets, there was even more controversy. In 1781, astronomer Sir William Herschel and mathematician Alexis Bouvard were arguing over how to name Uranus, which is a joke, but not a joke at the same time. The scientific community decided to name it for them, because that way there was no controversy. Then in 1840, the planet Neptune was named by its original discoverer, also to keep the British and the French from fighting. And then Pluto actually got its name from the suggestion of an 11-year-old, again, to stem controversy. Naming things is rough, dude. To settle this conflict over naming, the International Astronomical Union was founded in 1919 and currently has members in 93 countries. Even with agreed-upon naming conventions, it can take decades to actually decide a name on something, and the IAU names every comet, asteroid, mountain, crater, star. If it flies around in space, they get to name it. And this ain't like naming your dog. There are a lot of rules. The rules for naming P4 and P5 are pretty straightforward. You have to stick to the naming convention of the land of Hades, like the other satellites in the region. It should be one word that's 16 characters or less. It needs to be pronounceable in some language. It can't be offensive, which is kind of too bad because I would really like to see a moon named Bitch. What's that in the sky? <laughs> it's just Pluto's bitch. They cannot be pets names, they can't be commercial, and they can't be similar to any names that already exist. So no Capital One, Moon, or Fido, or Ganymode. On the list of possible names are Orpheus, and Hercules, and Styx, among a number of other ones, but you can write in your own if you've got a suggestion. I wonder if James Woods could be the name. I mean, he voiced Hades in the Disney version version of Hercules, <laughs> that would be sweet. What's that in the sky, James Woods? So if you want to do your part and help science name some moons in our solar system, go to the website that I put at the bottom of the screen here and make sure you vote. You've got a couple of weeks and you can vote once every day. What would you call Earth if it weren't called Earth? I like Terra or Bob. <laughs> Give us your suggestions for P4, P5, and sure, Earth, why not? And make sure that before you go vote, you subscribe to D News because you wouldn't want to miss all this. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'm Trace. See you next time.